Welcome back to the finale of what if Padme was the real chosen one. Thank you to those of you who watched the other parts of this video. To recap what happened in those in case you haven't seen them. Following the discovery of Anakin on Tatooine, Qui-Gon had left the Jedi Order, as they had initially refused to change the Jedi code for Padme. Palpatine began to lay the plans for the Clone War, but Qui-Gon and his Padawan Anakin had found the droid factory on Geonosis, and being offered to join Dooku, they find Padme's ship being hunted down on their way to Coruscant. Anakin pushed their ship further forwards in a bid to catch up with the pursuers and saw that there were more ships on the radar in the form of M1 starfighters, spotting that Padme would have likely used a decoy. Swiftly moving to the ground, they catch sight of an explosion in the Naboo starship and as Anakin pursued the assassin, Qui-Gon and Shmi headed to the apartment of Padme Amidala where he asked for a view on the deal proposed by Dooku. The Senator trusted the judgement of the Jedi Master, but decided to maintain a distance on the deal to prevent more corruption leaking into the Senate and Qui-Gon goes to find his Padawan. Anakin had lost track of the Assassin and the powerful Force user is distraught that the Assassin could return for a second attempt and pleads with Qui-Gon to accept the offer from Dooku. The Master trusted in the Force and quickly sped off back to Geonosis, where Dooku was still in the same hideout. The Count is pleased that Qui-Gon had chosen to accept the Alliance and called off the assassination on Padme, as he then revealed that the Dark Lord of the Sith was in charge of the Senate. From what Padme had told them about the corruption in the Republic, Qui-Gon immediately identified the Sith Lord to be Palpatine and reporting the development back to Anakin on Coruscant, the Padawan asked for Padme to remain on the planet and not accept the offer of the Jedi to escort her back to Naboo. The Jedi are strongly opposed to Padme's increased risk of death but continuing to resist the Military Creation Act, Dooku and Qui-Gon knew she would not be able to resist the efforts of Palpatine for any more time and put their plans to lure Palpatine and the Jedi into action. At the Jedi Temple, the change in the Jedi Code had reduced the number of defections from the Order and receiving a signal from Geonosis, the Council were able to dispatch an entire legion of Jedi Masters, including Obi-Wan Kenobi. The Jedi Master had furthered and completed his training under Yoda and leading the investigation into the Separatist signal, he saw a dormant droid army waiting to be deployed. The Jedi are confused by the strategy of Dooku and cautiously retreating to the Geonosis Mountains, they report to the Council to prepare to mobilise more Jedi for an imminent conflict. The Jedi suddenly hear a rumble in the distance and the stampede of the droids approaching them, forcing them to ignite their lightsabers failing to notice a stealthy ship passing overhead. The Jedi are all lured to the Petronarchy Arena and without the aid of the terrain, they are trapped by the droids and the Geonosians. In the arena's corridors, Palpatine had been pleased by the progress made by Dooku's factories, but he felt as if there was something more to this invitation and he was proven correct by the sound of numerous lightsabers igniting. Palpatine applauded the efforts of his apprentice, but their combined might was no match for his power in the dark side and he sent them all back into the walls of the corridors. Moving to fight his traitorous apprentice, he is forced to abandon his pursuit as Jango Fett had intervened to defend from the Count of Sereno and deploying his arsenal of weapons. He soon had Sidious joining the main arena. The Sith Lord had had enough of the bounty hunter and eviscerated him with a lining attack but the battle had called the attention of the Jedi. Windu and Yoda tried to jump towards him, but they're continuously repelled until Anakin began a hate fueled frenzy on the Sith Lord. Palpatine cackled at the barrage of strikes and told Anakin that if he were to replace Dooku and become his apprentice, he would achieve his full potential. Anakin hesitated for a brief moment until they heard a whirring from above and there was Padme hovering in her ship, ordering Anakin to resist the temptations of the Sith. The Jedi now surrounded them and as Anakin lowered his blade, the Jedi surged to Palpatine but they are stopped by the sound of an ELG-3A blaster pistol firing into Palpatine. Padme had emerged from the smoke to shock the Sith Lord and whilst the Jedi destroyed the remainder of the droids, the Senators negotiated a settlement with Dooku and the Separatist Alliance. Padme and Anakin are happily married on Naboo with Qui-Gon as the Master of Ceremonies. Anakin and Qui-Gon finally accept the offer to return to the Jedi Order and help to restructure the Jedi Code to prevent the Sith from returning again, with the Council forced to concede that Qui-Gon had been right in identifying Padme as the Chosen One. That is if what if Padme was the Chosen One. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel what if films. And as always, 
Leave a comment on Mobile TV Law Lighter C next and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching and see you next time.